bless all of you out there, amen, on Facebook and Zoom and Twitter and all those particular mediums in which you can see this broadcast today. I am excited because today as I was getting ready to do some things, God just put a man of God on my heart. And I, I was just shocked because time was running out. My broadcast was getting ready to start in just an hour or so. And I called him and just out of no way, he just said, yes, I'll be there. And I was excited about this great opportunity to have such a great man of God, amen, with me on today. Amen. I always brag on him because I realized that this is a preaching machine. Amen. The Bible tells us that it is so important to let others brag on you and not brag on yourself. And I'm telling you, this man of God, Bishop Van Sharp, amen, I'm so glad to have him in the house today. He has written many books, and this is what prompted the thought to come together today to give him the opportunity to be able to share about all of his books. You know, sometimes we don't know the value of a person when they're right in your midst. We think reaching way out, amen, across to Florida and, and California and all these places, when we hear these preachers, that what we have in our own surrounding areas, we think that they're not that important. It reminds me of the word that it says, the poor man delivered a city, but amen, the people did not regard him. But let me tell you something, there's a prophet in the house, and I'm so glad to have this man of God with us today, and I know that God is going to mightily use him as we just share, amen, about his books, and also, amen, just a word of encouragement to all of you that are out there. But instead of me constantly running off with the mouth, I'm going to give him the opportunity to come and, and share with you, amen, the word, amen, that is upon his heart. Because I believe that God has something up his sleeve because at the last minute, as I said earlier, at the last minute, God just put him on my heart and I wanted to bring him in on today. So I'd like to introduce to you today, Bishop Van Shaw. Amen. Amen. I am so honored to be here and I thank God for Apostle Kenneth Anderson sharing this wonderful platform uh, with me. And I salute him and I honor him because he is indeed a great, honorable man of God. And I always tell him, and I want Rocky Mount and surrounding areas to know that you are blessed to have this man of God. Thank God that he came all the way from New Jersey to be a part of what God is doing in our surrounding areas. So we here in the Rocky Mount, Tarboro, Wilson, the eastern North Carolina area, our lives have been enriched. Our lives have been blessed because of this man of God. And of course, I cannot leave out his lovely wife, Janice Anderson, who stands by his side and is so gifted as a decorator and as a, a woman of God, as well as a smart, brilliant child of the king. And we are always blessed because the Bible says that he that findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtain favor from the Lord. So a shout out uh, to Janeth Anderson, Pastor Janice. We love you and Newness of Life Christian Center. We will always honor and respect who you are in the kingdom. Amen. Now, ahead, and I would also ahead. like to thank God for my, for my lovely wife. I hope and pray she's watching. Amen. None other than Pastor Reese and Esther Sharp. She's indeed a great, great asset to me. I wouldn't be who I am. I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing without her love and without her support. And she's also so gifted, so talented, so knowledgeable, amen, in the word of God as well as in the natural realm. And so we are both blessed men of God because of our wives and also because of our local assemblies. God of deliverance is one of the strongest, one of the most powerful churches in our area. And so I want to salute and speak boldly to you uh, uh, that are members of God of Deliverance. You are blessed. You have a blessed leader. You are a blessed house. And that's a wonderful, wonderful thing in this hour and in this season. I was reading over in the book of Ezekiel how the Bible speaks about giving the man of God his dough that the blessing may come on your house. So I know you are blessed because anytime you bless a man of God, blessings come on your life. And I know many of you 
uh, that are part of God of deliverance. You can boldly say your life has been changed and enriched because of your man of God. I know Newness of Life Christian Center, you're one of the greatest churches in all the world, and I am so honored to serve you, and uh, we're just glad to be here tonight with the Apostle Kenneth Anderson. Well, I want you to already <clears throat> know that your wife done already came up on Facebook talking about she's your number one fan. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she really is. Amen. She really is. Before we, but before we get all stirred up, amen, amen I'm going to give uh, Bishop the opportunity to lead us in prayer before we start our segment. And uh, there's no time limit. We, you, when we get together a lot of time, we just roll and roll. Amen. And I'm so glad for the fellowship and the, the partnership. We've been knowing each other now over 20-something years. And I tell you, it was just amazing how we met. Mm -hmm. And we're so glad for Apostle Mel, amen, inviting me to come preach. Mm -hmm. And then I looked out at the audience and I saw Bishop Van. <laughs> but on my way moving down here to, uh, from New Jersey, I would always see him on TV. I said, you know, I like to meet that guy. And God <laughs> orchestrated that thing. And here we are, 20-something years later, Amen. still together, encouraging and empowering one another. As I always tell people that if you want to be successful in this walk of God, you've got to find somebody <clears throat> on, on the same wavelength of serving God. You can't be playing. You can't just, uh, you know, go uh, tiptoeing around the tulip. You really have to be serious about this walk that we call, amen, the faith walk, amen? amen. So at this time, I ask Bishop to lead us in prayer. Amen. Father, we are so honored. We're just so blessed to be in your presence, to be able to speak forth life to your people. We know how valuable and special and unique your people are. So we don't take them taking out the time to listen and to watch for granted. But we believe you, Father, to give us the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of revelation, and cause your word to be spoken with clarity and with purpose and with enlightenment that will refresh and revive those hearts that are weary and those hearts that feel like throwing in the towel. We thank you for strengthening your people and the anointing falling in this place. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen, amen, amen. 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 Bishop, I'm excited. <laughs> Amen. Again, uh, you're the author of many different books. Amen. But before we get into that, I want to just bring up the fact that, amen, you have your own Facebook page and you all come on at one time. Amen. Well, we are uh, coming on on Facebook Live each and every Tuesday night at 730. You can watch us on Facebook Live. Also, each and every Thursday at seven o'clock, we have a program called Sharp Points taken from Proverbs 27 and 17 that declares that iron sharpeneth iron so that the man sharpen the countenance of his friend. And then each and every Sunday morning we come on at 1015, just sharing the word and letting the anointing of God have his way. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I, I, like I said, again, it, it is just exciting to be able to, to, to know that this was a just a last minute thing, but the <laughs> Holy Ghost, somebody ought to say the Holy Ghost. <laughs> the Holy Ghost knows how to, you know, just orchestrate things to happen. And I don't know what, how you want to start with talking about your first book. <laughs> Amen. But I got up here on Facebook, a number of your books at one time. You've got Let the Prophet Speak. Now, that's his latest book, <laughs> Let the Prophet Speak. And I tell you, that today, most folks don't really understand the works of a prophet. Amen. Amen. And a lot of times they got in their mind that the prophet's going to come and just give them a whole lot of sugar water. Amen. But the, amen, there was a time when the prophet would show up, there'd be some problems going on. Amen. And then you amen. have the long distance run. Amen. I'm going to let you go ahead and, and share about what you see on the, the, the slide here. Amen. amen. As to just give a few points before we get into each book as you share today. Amen. Well, by the grace of God, we give God all the glory because we understand that our thoughts are very, very important. In the book of Proverbs, the Bible speaks about how that the word of God is health to all our flesh. And then in the easy translation, the Bible says, be careful how you think. Your thoughts make you the person that you are. So it's very, very important that we think well in this season, that we Understand that renewing of the mind is so important to every one of us who are Christians. We need to renew our minds 
through the type of music we listen to. We shouldn't listen at every kind of music because the Bible tells us whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure and lovely and honest. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. We should be thinking on things that add strength to us and add vitality to our lives. So no Christian should be listening at crazy music that we used to listen at before we got saved. Now we are new creatures. And it's important that we renew our minds and listen at music that will cause us to enter into the presence of God and experience God in an awesome way. We shouldn't just do it on Sunday. It should be a lifestyle. We should throw that other kind of music in the trash can, burn it up, because it's witchcraft. It bewitches us. It leads us away from God. It causes us to dance and, 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 and walk in ways that are not conducive for a Christian. The Bible said we once walked in the vanity of our minds, but now as new creatures, we shouldn't listen to that type of music. Also, it's important to, to know that what we set before our eyes gets into our spirit. The light of the body is the eye, and so our eyes, what we let go before them is very, very important. So we should read good material that lifts us up. And so we have written 13 books to challenge the body of Christ, to build up the body of Christ. And we give God all the glory because I never set out to be a writer. I was just called by God to preach and teach the word of God. And then one day God said, write some things that I'm telling you to write. And I start, my wife, uh, who knew that God was dealing with me about writing, went out and got uh, a little machine back then. It didn't have computers. Uh, I can't think of the name of it. She was here. She would help me out. But anyway, uh, I wrote, start typing some stuff and start writing some stuff. And next thing I know, we've written 13 books and we give God all the glory. Our first book that we wrote uh, is entitled How to Overpower Discouragement. That was the first one that we wrote, How to Overpower Discouragement, because a lot of people, they get discouraged. And we have to understand that being discouraged is not bad, it's not evil, it's not wicked. It's a feeling, it's an emotion that we have to overcome. And we have to overcome it because whenever you're a person of vision, there's going to be some stuff that Satan is going to send. There are going to be some things that happen in your life that try to negate your vision. So this book was written to try to help people not be discouraged, not commit suicide, not give up on life, not keep playing around with discouragement, but overpower it before it moves into the arena of depression. Depression is totally of the devil. It's not an emotion. It's demonic. And Satan would love to try to bring us into that depression state so that we will really, really mess our lives up. The Bible said in Acts, the 10th chapter, verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost who went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil. So there is an oppression that comes from Satan, and we want to overcome that and overcome that through dealing with discouragement before it ever moves into that demonic area. And I'm a witness. Yeah. Because back when I was 23 years old, I knew what discouragement was mm -hmm. and still is <laughs> uh, to people because mm -hmm. you, you'd be surprised that you, you can lose your mind yeah. as, I, as he's saying about God giving you power to yeah. overcome discouragement, mm -hmm. demonic powers. Yeah. Amen. Them powers had me. They mm -hmm. gave up on me medically, said I would never be able to fit back into society mm -hmm. all the poison that I drank. Amen. Running up into the projects. Hallelujah. Getting ready to jump off a bridge. All those things getting ready to blow my brains out. Mm. Come on. Hallelujah. At age 23, they, they gave you, me up. But when God's word came into my heart, mm. amen. Hallelujah. Here I am. <laughs> I'm now 65 years young. Amen. Amen. By Glory the grace to God. God. Hallelujah. So that book, amen, talking about discouragement. Number one self. Amen. Amen. It's a blessing from God because even Elijah, Elijah was discouraged on one occasion. And the Bible said that Elijah, man, he, he sat down under the juniper tree. Amen. And the Lord said, what doest thou here, Elijah? Rise up. So God gave him the word, which we would say as the word, he gave him some uh, cakes to eat. And he went in the strength of that meat for 40 days. So we need the word of God so that we can go in the strength of that. The second book that we wrote is entitled Seeking God Makes You Prosper. And that is a book that deals with the area of obedience and how important your man or woman of God is into your life. 
because they are going to help you stay on that path of obedience. Because when we obey God, we're going to prosper. When we seek and pursue God, it leads us to the prosperity that we want out of life. There's no doubt about it. God wants us to prosper. He wants us to push forward, to do well in life. But we must do what the Bible says. The Bible says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. He that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And every time in the Bible where men obeyed God and really walked in obedience, there were other men who kept them on that path who was important to them. I want to just interrupt just for a second because you touched on a very, very major part of success mm -hmm. is being accountable. Yes. I think in this generation that a lot of times these young people, young preachers, you know, young mm -hmm. leaders, their, their, their accountability is that want people to account to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's so important when I think about your mentor, when mm -hmm. I think about mine. Matter yeah. of fact, mm -hmm. I was pondering that just a couple of days ago and I put it up on Facebook how I was so grateful mm -hmm. for the foundation. Right. Because that foundation is so <laughs> very, very important. Go yeah. ahead, preacher. Yeah, it's, that, imp it's, it's important. important it's important yes. because uh, the king, Uzziah, he, he, he was doing right until the prophet Zechariah got out of his life. When Zechariah moved off the scene, then we find in the word of God where he tried to execute, Uzziah did, to execute the office of a king and a priest. <laughs> And he messed, messed himself up. up. Yeah, see, he messed exactly. himself up. So when we don't have men of God speaking in, into our lives, helping us stay on that right path, we open up a door for Satan to take advantage and, of and, us. And, and when that door cracks <laughs> just a little bit, guess what happens? They get mad with the very one that's assigned mm. to bring their deliverance. That's right. Isn't, that's that, right. isn't that amazing? That is amazing. That, that is, is amazing. simply amazing. So Amen. when we talk about seeking God it, because he wants to make us prosper. Yeah, he does. There's no, two, there's no doubt about it. I've gone places that I don't think I would have ever gone. Amen. Amen. Had not God, you know, came into my life. Amen. India, Amen. That's huh? right. You that's right. Come wow. On. A Amen. Whole week? That's right. Come on. That's and, just and, an imagination. And we see <laughs> over and over again in the Bible, Hezekiah, as long, the Bible says, as long as he sought God, mm -hmm. God made him to prosper. That's All right. those kings, it would say, Wherever they seek God, whenever they will seek God, God made them to prosper. And that's what Joshua tells us. Joshua chapter 1 tells us to meditate in the word day and night, and we will have good success good. because we observe to do all those things that he's written therein. Then shall thou make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. So mm -hmm. it's important. The third book we wrote is entitled Sheep Taming Wolves, and that book, we talk about how important it is for us to do what Jesus told us to do. He said, behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. And so that's a strange thing if you are a good shepherd to send your sheep where wolves are. But Jesus understood that the only thing that could tame a wolf is a sheep. And so in that book, we talk about meekness is not weakness. We talk about how to be an operating function with a nonviolent approach and how that we ought to follow the principles that Jesus taught us. And then the fourth book <clears throat> that we wrote is entitled, Don't Lose Yours Trying to Save Theirs. And that's my wife's favorite book. And uh, <laughs> amen. And she'll tell me sometime you need to go read your book. <laughs> now, now Amen. You, you talking about favorite? Yeah. That was my favorite. Okay. Amen. Because let me tell you something. You can get so wrapped up in ministry. Yeah. And I made a lot of mistakes with yeah. my, my kids. You know, I'm right. thinking ministry, ministry, ministry. Yeah. But the knowledge I got now, yeah. and I think when you brought that <laughs> book out, I think that was a time when my kids were getting a little older and stuff. Right. And, and hey, it helped me because I read it more than one time. Amen. Man. Amen. And a lot, a lot of families have been saved through it. Uh, a lot of marriages and homes have been saved through it. That we don't want to lose our family, lose our children, trying to help everybody else save theirs. Because the demands of ministry are always increasing as we go from glory to glory, from faith to faith, and from strength to strength. And our families, those who are close to us, is uh, are the people that Satan will use sometimes to try to use against us because he'll try to attack them to try to get to us. And any time when we're doing something great from, for God, Satan will try to use somebody close to us 
to try to destroy us or distract us or move us away. So we have to be careful that we pull our families as close as we can to us and seek to do the will of God and that the saints around us, that they understand that there are times when we can't be everything to them, Jim. that we're teaching them how to look to God, how to pray, how to, how to fast, how to read their Bible, because there may be a time when they call us and we're not able to be there for them because we're somewhere with our family or with our daughter or son or something and, like and it's that. It's so important for our children mm -hmm. to understand the attachment to our hearts. Yeah. I think because we're dad, you know, mm -hmm. all dad, and, <laughs> and, and, and then they run off, you know, sometimes yeah. working in other ministries right. and different things, and, and they have their own. Mm -hmm. or they, they go out and live in the street in such a way that it tries to bring shame yeah. to their parents yeah. who are serving in ministry. Yeah. But if they could really understand that the enemy wants to use them mm -hmm. to discourage us yeah. so that we feel like giving mm -hmm. up the yeah. thing, you know, but and thank the, God for it. Don't lose yours. Amen. And, and, you know, Jesus taught us, you know, no man that left houses, land, brother, father, sister, mother. Why is Jesus talking about this? Mother, father. So he's, he's talking about stuff that's close to you, children. Okay. All Jesus okay. trying to tell us, hey, if you love your children more than you do me, mm -hmm. Satan is going to use that. That's right. So you got to be careful. You got to deny even your own life yes, sir. to yes, follow sir. him. Jesus, Jesus is trying to it's keep tough. us it's, safe. It's tough. Yeah, he's trying to keep just us safe. It look easy. That's why everybody <laughs> wants to be free. But it ain't easy. Yeah, that's, that's you know, true. They see you up there, ah, especially you. Hey, ah, man. Ah, no. Ah, <laughs> hey, man. It, it, Amen. We just make it look easy. Amen. But they don't know the battles yeah. that we have to carry. And we can't bleed on them. That's right. We got to go in the closet and talk to God that's, about all yeah, our situations. That's right. If we, you know, it, may, it amazes me that a lot of times folks say, Pastor, you don't look like you go through anything. That's right. Wow. Because you and make it look easy. That's right. Because the that's grace right. of God is on us. And that's because right. we made that commitment, we counted up the cost and we recognize that we have to do the will of God. And things close to us. Mm -hmm must never get ahead of God. God right. must remain first above our children, above our father, above our mother. But Amen. You know Even when I was, my mother, but, my but own you, mother, uh -huh. before she got saved, mm -hmm. she didn't know the Lord. I mean, she loves God now. Stop talking about my mom. Amen. She's a sweet lady. She, <laughs> she loves God Stop now. Stop talking about my mom. She <laughs> loves God now. She loves God now. But yeah. Satan knew how That's much right. we love my brother and I love my mom. Right. I mean, we, I lo we love our mama. Mm -hmm. uh, she's a wonderful woman that's raised us and uh, taught us how to be men as well as taught my, my sister how to be a lady. My mother's just been great, mm -hmm. but she wasn't saved. And Satan, any time when you're moving forward in God and trying to go to another level and trying to help people, Satan's going to try to use something that's close to you to try to pull your mind down and everything else. And that's why it takes so much focus to do this, it takes a lot of focus to do this. Even think about those who play in the in the championship game, basketball and everything. Mm. In this book, uh, let the prophet speak. I talk about. You can't talk to. Okay, can't I can't skip. talk about it yet. Okay. We can't skip. Okay, can't, I can't skip. Can't okay. Skip. I'm, I'm, all right, maybe I come back. Okay, okay, okay. Now we'll see what's gonna happen. Here. <laughs> He's gonna talk about the book, then come right back. Uh, and talk about, we're gonna go right to this here book. Okay. And then we're gonna go okay. to the next one. Because <laughs> you know what? You'd be surprised. And, and and I'm spending time with this because <clears throat> when you think about family, <clears throat> that was God's ultimate. <clears throat> that was his ultimate. We have made ministry ultimate, <clears throat> but it's really family <clears throat> ultimate. Right. Because God first, family second, ministry third. <clears throat> and I've seen shipwrecks. <clears throat> You know, when you look at ministry, you see shipwrecks where people make the ministry more important. Mm -hmm. They are, and I mean, they're being awesomely used. Mm -hmm. And even in that, mm -hmm. you can be used, but also still be deceived. Right. Because you're reaching people out there, but your mm -hmm. your home tore all the pieces. Right. You right. know, and, and and it's sad because the most the most important thing to you is reaching somebody. I've yeah. got a friend of mine. Um, who thinks that ministry is everything he wants to do, mm -hmm. while his family is being literally torn to pieces. Right. You know, and right. you try to reach and try to share, but something about the psyche of, your, uh, of, of folk, they think that, oh, God's going to reward you for all these great works. Mm -hmm. But again, God established what first in the garden? Right. Family. family. Right. And 
I, I, I really believe that when you establish that that the church and the relationship man between man and woman was, was right there together. And I think that the hardest thing for anybody to do who's a visionary is to maintain balance. Mm. It's, 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 it's a difficult thing. I, I know that even NBA players uh, have to deal with that. They, they give a lot of credit to their wives and spouses because they understand that when they're fighting for championships and trying to win, how focused they have to be. Uh, ba- baseball players, any time you're at the top of anything or striving to be good at it, it takes a lot of sacrifice, and everybody has to join in and be willing to make that sacrifice. But we always, my wife and I always understood that Satan would try to use anything or anybody close to you to try to pull you away from the assignment. And we have to stay true to the assignment and stay true to God and stay true to what God is doing and then trust God to bring and bring our families in because God can save while we're doing his work. He's, you, you don't forget your children. You, you just keep doing God's work and then say, God, now you see what I'm doing. I trust you to do what you promised. You promised that you would save the whole house. So I believe that you're going to bring my, my child in. I don't know when. I don't know where. Because that's what I did with my mom. I kept serving God. And other people's mamas were getting saved. And I wanted my mama to be saved. <laughs> but my mama won't save yet. She was attacking everything I was called and assigned to do. That's what, that's she would go, she would go that's to that's another another place of worship. That, wouldn't come to where I am. But I, I knew but that, that this was us, Satan. But you know what? That leads us right into your next book. The blessings, the of, blessings rejection. of rejection. Because <laughs> rejection will make you change your mind. Right. Come on, y'all. Right. I mean, because everybody wants to be accepted. Right. But let's, let me tell you something. When you start really being focused, like you were saying, mm-hmm. that in order to achieve what God has put in your heart to do, you have to be willing mm-hmm. to be rejected. Yeah. Talk about that. Yeah. Book, uh, the blessings of rejection is the uh, fifth book that we wrote, and we're trying in that book to show you that nobody accomplishes anything great without going through some type or some form of rejection. Amen. Jesus was rejected. Jephthah was rejected. David was rejected. Moses was rejected. They said, oh, you're uh, you going to kill us the same way you killed the man on yesterday. And everybody you, you see in the Bible who did great things, they went through some type and form of rejection. But in this book, I talk about 10 reasons why we face rejections and 14 blessings that come out of rejection. Rejection ultimately is a blessing because the Bible said, Jesus said, the same stone that the builders rejected is become the head cornerstone or the chief cornerstone. A lot of times that's the way you get promoted is through being rejected. And that's the way you find out, I talk about in this book, how you find out your Kairos moment or your Kairos timing. You find it out through some type of rejection because it pushes you right into a divine moment that you will forever remember. God has a way of doing some great things through the blessings of rejection. It's a tremendous book, and uh, it's an awesome, awesome word. And it, it, it's <clears> amazing, <throat> again, as I, as I ponder that I know somebody as great as you. It's no not, way. you know, somebody that you look at on television. You know, a lot of times we admire people, you know, because we see them on television. But mm. you know what the advantage is that I have concerning knowing you, that Amen. most people who admire these people on television, Amen. I know you also in the flesh. Amen. And, Amen. And, and see, that's the amazing thing that when Paul said, my, my, my life is an open book. Amen. You know, because Amen. why? You're living what you're preaching. Amen. And Amen. It, it's just so awesome to just say, hey, man, when you reach that place, when you when you reach that plateau, Amen. I want to say, I know him. Amen. Well, <laughs> I say that about you now. I know you. <laughs> you know, I, I, I think it's important that, like you said, we let another man's mouth praise us. And we always remember that we are what we are by the grace of God and understand that humility is everything to God. It's the key to promotion. Uh, Jesus took upon him the form of a servant and he humbled himself. And now he has a name, which is above every name. And and I know that I'm nothing without God. I'm nothing without the prayers of the righteous. I'm nothing without surrounding myself like great men like yourself. 
being around me, so I understand who you are, that too. Key, that key word, though, it, <clears throat> I don't know why I keep hearing that okay. key word, is accountability. Okay. It, it, it's, it, it's so awesome to know that if you're going to have a spiritual upgrade, you mm. first got to get around folks that's going to push you to that next yeah. level. You're talking about my sixth book, <laughs> Spiritual <laughs> Upgrade. <laughs> that's the sixth book. It's entitled Spiritual Upgrade, Challenging Yourself to Improve. And uh, this book really is talking about your prayer life, your commitment, how committed and dedicated are you are, are you to God, to his work, to his kingdom? Because the Bible says a faithful man shall abound in blessings. That's what the word of God tells us. The Bible said confidence in a unfaithful man is like a broken tooth. And a foot out of joint, it causes pain in other words. So in this book, we talk about upgrading your people like people upgrade their cell phones, their television set. But they need to upgrade their prayer life, their commitment, their uh, focus, their health. We want to upgrade ourselves spiritually. So that's another book that we wrote. And then we wrote a book called uh, <clears throat> Riding the Back <clears throat> excuse me, of a Soul. And that book just is a practical and it's very important that we understand that giving <clears throat> is practical, but it triggers the supernatural. And many people are not practical in their giving. They think that God wants their money, so here God take it. No, God wants us to be prompt, hilarious givers. He wants you and I to give willingly. When Moses took up the offering for the tabernacle, God commanded Moses, do not take up the offering from anybody whose heart is not willing. And this is so important when it comes to giving because it hurts people in that they won't get a return. And then they're going to be mad because they're giving. I'm doing what attitude, you said. Attitude, attitude. Yes, exactly. Attitude. Exactly. Guess what? You can <laughs> give, but if attitude, attitude exactly. still ain't right, there's no increase. No way. No, no way. No increase because attitude is everything. Yeah. That willing. God does what? Loves a cheerful giver. Give Here the preacher want my money to get mm -hmm. healed. Always. Mm -hmm. that. And guess what? You give, but you give in rebellion. That's right. And, and you won't get that reward. And so on, we tell people, even when they give to our local assembly, we tell them, look, if you if you're giving it mad, you're giving it grudge, please keep it because it will not do you any good and you're gonna think that giving doesn't work. You have to be willing. The Bible says if we be willing and obedient, we'll eat the good of the land. Notice it didn't say obedient. He said willing and obedient. So we teach people how important it is to sow willingly. The people gave to the tabernacle willingly. They gave so much that the elders had to stop the people from giving because they gave willingly. And Woo! that's so we teach about giving willingly. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I look forward to the day that we can be able to stand in the pulpit mm -hmm. and say, it is enough. Yeah. Yeah. Man, is that awesome or what? Yeah. yeah. That 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 shows it's not giving because you have to. Mm -hmm. It's not that I'm just going to do it to be sh uh, a show off. Right. But giving because you see the purpose of God. Yeah, exactly. Ah, that was Amen. You and see we, the purpose of God. And we strive to do that through having a budget set for our local church every Sunday. And we meet that budget, even though people want to give, we say, hey, that's it. We, re we reach that budget and we celebrate the fact that we reached our budget. So we, it's almost like saying what Moses said. Hey, you don't have to give. We got enough. And uh, that's how, you know, I think the local ministry should be run, that you have a budget set. And when people give and reach that, then, hey, glory, we have we have enough. Hey, Amen. And so that's the shout that we do at Newness of Life. And it's sort of similar to what happened with Moses because we have a budget set. And when we get that budget, then, hey, if you we got it. We made it. We did what we need to do. We got what we need to give. But people, we want them to know that giving willingly, giving faithfully, giving joyously is important to God. And whenever you give willingly, faithfully, faithfully, faithfully. every time you get though, every time you get any kind of increase, give your tithe, give an offering, and watch God bless you. You that are at God of deliverance, you know this man of God is doing right with finance. You can see it. You don't have to wonder, well, what do you do? You can see it. Look at the beauty of the house. Look at the beauty of what he's doing. Look at the excellence of what he's doing. 
And so you ought to be willing and joyfully and prompt to give to this ministry, to God of deliverance. Those that newness of life, you can see it with the purchasing of 11 acres of land, the land paid off. Amen. With the purchase of the building, the building paid off. With being on television, being on radio. Amen. You can see. That's right. And it takes finances. So Prayer is excellent. <laughs> but as I always try to tell people, you know, we, we there's a spiritual side and then there's a practical Ooh, side. Yes. Because we have to count up the cost to see if we have sufficient to finish. Yeah. And we are stepping out in faith. Men and women of God who, who are full time like yeah. as we are mm -hmm. to just believe that God is going to supply and that we're going to reach that vision. We're going to make that thing manifest. Because we're speaking that thing. Mm -hmm. Amen. We're pouring it out each week. <laughs> we're letting folks know, can't you see what God is doing? Yeah. So even the more. Why? Because when you take the brakes off, you open up the floodgates. Yeah. Amen. And as he said earlier, God wants us to prosper. Mm -hmm. But when we prosper, mm -hmm. we've got to understand the meaning of the prosper, yeah. the prosperity. And that is to also fund God's vision. Yeah. When I think about it, when the children of Israel came out of bondage, they left with the spoils of Egypt. Amen. They didn't leave out saying, okay, now I got mine. That's right. They knew that there was a purpose behind it. The tabernacle, because when yes, sir. when Moses got out there in the wilderness, <laughs> he had to build what? The tabernacle. And yeah. he had to have what? He had to have the funds and Come everything on, necessary to do it. So we know that God wants to do that. He wants to prosper his people. The Bible said that God delighted in the prosperity. He takes pleasure. In other words, that's what the King James Version says. He takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. Mm -hmm. So God wants you to have the best. He wants you to be a blessing. That's the part of the Abrahamic covenant. I will bless you and thou shalt be a blessing. And that's what we are all about. Blessing the kingdom, blessing the man of God, blessing the woman of God, making sure, amen, that there is no lack in the kingdom of God. Now, we know that the world system mm -hmm. is going to fight that. We know that they're going to talk about that. Mm -hmm. They're going to be against that because Probably. their uh, God is money. Mm -hmm. But you and I, we know that money has a purpose. Money is a defense mm -hmm. and money answers all things. And so we understand that we brought nothing into this world. Certain we can take nothing out. So let's sow seeds because as long as the earth remains, there will always be seed time and harvest. God will never, ever, never, ever let your seed not be rewarded when it's sowed joyfully, willingly. I, I've got a question. I've got a question. Okay. Do you have my back? Yes. A book we wrote called I Am My Brother's Keeper. <laughs> yes, I do, sir. Amen. We wrote another book called I Am My Brother's Keeper, and that book was inspired Amen. By the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I'm telling you, it has blessed a lot of lot of men to help them understand that you're not in this fight alone, that we are in this and we are in this to help each other, to strengthen each other, to help each other be everything that God wants us to be. There's some tremendous nuggets in this book. I am my brother's keeper. Amen. And so I advise you to get a copy of that book if you are a man or if you are a woman who has a husband or a son, or a nephew, or even an uncle, make sure they get this book. I guarantee you they will be blessed by that book. It is so important to understand as well, when you talk about, am I my brother's keeper? Mm -hmm. is it, Again, it magnifies the need for accountability. Yeah. Because when you start getting weak, or things or storms come, amen, to wreck your world, mm -hmm. Some of these battles you can't fight by yourself. Amen. And just like the young man in, in I believe it was Georgia, he had a booming ministry. Mm. Amen. They it was so so widely spread that they had two services, mm. and be, in between the service he went home and did what? He killed himself. Mm. Now from the visual outlay, it mm. looks like everything was fantastic, mm. marvelous, and superb. But there was an inner war mm. going on. Mm. Who at that level? Could he talk to mm. who at that level wow. did he say i'm having a struggle mm -hmm. because why everybody's looking up to you but mm -hmm. i think the key preacher mm -hmm. is that we don't get so elevated mm -hmm. that we think that we become god right we have to realize that when those moments hit that accountability of being my brother's keeper or if you see mm -hmm. someone going off right 
You know, just like uh, I, I believe that it was um, Kurt Franklin just had an issue mm -hmm. with his son. Right. You know, and people, the people, again, that surfaced Christianity stuff was trying to give him a, a, a buy. Mm -hmm. But yes, give him a buy and talk about grace and all that, but also pull him aside and say, brother, help you him. can't be talking like yeah, that. Yeah, help him. That's you, right. You, you really can't be talking. I don't care how mad <laughs> you get. Right. You got to realize there's somebody who will set you up, and that's right. called the enemy. Right. Because you're making an in, a influx mm -hmm. into the kingdom of darkness. Mm -hmm. So any little thing will get magnified. Yeah. Am and I that, right about it? You're right. And that's, you know, that's what Cain did. Cain killed his brother. And after he killed his brother, God called him on the carpet. And he said, wait a minute. You asking me where, your, where, where my brother is? Am I my brother's keeper? And the answer to that is, yes, you were supposed to have been standing by your brother, helping your brother. And even with the, the attitude of Kurt Franklin, like you said, we need somebody spiritual. And the Bible said, uh, he that is spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering yourself, lest thou also be tempted. So if those who are spiritual need to surround him and encourage him. Look, man. Please don't go back to the world totally. But at the same time, amen, understand like he did. I think he apologized and everything else. But understand, amen, that this is these are areas that you need to work on. But we do need you in the kingdom. And like you said, Satan is doing everything he can to try to pull people or to make the name of Jesus look bad. But we are called to be his representatives, his ambassadors. But we understand that the perfect example is Jesus. And we want people to look to Jesus, but at the same time, they ought to be able to look at us and understand that we are followers of Christ and Paul examples. Said. Follow me. Yeah. That's what Paul exactly. Said. Look at me. <laughs> yeah, See, as I follow like Christ. Open book. Right. See, when you when you're really called of God, you yeah. ain't shucking and jiving, yeah. ducking and hiding. Yeah. And you yeah. don't take a bold approach That's to right. sin. That's it's right. just like somebody out there, if you out there in the world and you get saved. Well, when you get saved, you can't go out here now and let people see you dancing and everything. And that like, that's that's bold. The Bible called that presumptuous sin. Mm -hmm. If you really having a struggle, you want to work on that privately. But you don't get bold and presumptuous. Like, I don't care what nobody say. I'm going to curse anyway. That's what we have to try to help people like Steve Harvey. You know, because he's like, I'm going to curse. I'm going to listen. And, See, that and, you, and you, he's got that's, people believing that that's okay. Yeah, and that's, that's presumptuous sin. And David said, keep me back mm -hmm. from presumptuous sin. That's that bold. When I get so bold that I don't care what nobody said, I'm going to do my own thing. Mm -hmm. See, you not got, you lost your mind and you need to get no, it back. It, it's, not, it's, it's not just him. <laughs> he's being empowered yeah. by just religious form folk. Right. Because they talk like that. Right. And the Bible you know? tells us to come out, out come out from, from among, among them and be and separate. You separate. Yeah. And we, so that means and we have... That's not the unclean Yes, thing. sir. Yes. Now, come on, somebody. <laughs> I feel like standing up now. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. So... <laughs> <laughs> so we have to live a different lifestyle. He said, be ye holy for I am holy. Mean be different. That's all it means. Be different. We ought to be a different. And we, we know, and we should also, like I said, try to help people like Tyler Perry to understand that. I mean, with all his influence, we want him to know. As, if you're naming the name of Jesus, mm -hmm. you must depart from iniquity. You can't get bold and start cursing and swearing and think it doesn't mean anything. It's evil. It's there. wicked. Right. It's corrupt. And that's what I'm saying. We got to let go of that worldly music. Mm -hmm. We got to let go of uh, 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 ungodly uh, relationships and fellowship with people that are not striving after righteousness. The Bible said, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. So when Paul spoke to Timothy, he said, flee those things, O man of God, and follow after righteousness. All right, all the book we wrote is entitled Woman or Women of Substance. And this is a book to empower women, just like we empower men. We want to empower women. And it's a book that, that, that really informs women about how to be a smart woman. S-M-A-R-T. S stands for significant, multitasking, authentic, revolutionary treasure. Did, I, did you hear what I just said, ladies? You are significant, multitasking, authentic, 
revolutionary treasure. You are to be valued. You are to be upheld. And in this book, we talk about full circle woman being a game changing woman and all kinds of great things we talk about in this book. And then we wrote uh, another book we wrote is entitled Where Are Those Miracles? Releasing the Power of God. And that one deals with healing and deliverance as well as financial miracles. God is a God of miracles. And of course, Apostle Anderson here at God Deliverance teach you all that. But many people are now saying the miracles went out when the apostles went out. Well, there are still apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. We'll always be until we get on the other side. So miracles are important. And then after that, we wrote up uh, our, our latest two books. One is entitled Death, A Need to Understand. And we wrote this before this pandemic hit and before people start dying in these astronomical rates. God allowed me to foresee it. And I wrote a book called Death, A Need to Understand. And a lot of people don't understand death. Death is an enemy. And it's the last enemy that will be put under the feet of Jesus Christ. And we should resist it with everything we got. We should strive like never before to take care of our bodies and everything else. But we understand that if a Christian dies, amen, it's a time to rejoice because he's with the Preacher, Lord. I want you to really zero in on that statement you just made. Okay. Because this pandemic, uh, as, as awful as it has been, hmm. has also revealed the shortness of or the lack of revelation of heaven mm -hmm. in many of the lives of Christians. Yeah. Because I've seen devastation of individuals who had walked with yeah. God, yeah. but because of the departure, I like to say departure, mm -hmm. amen, because of the fact that this is not it, mm -hmm. but we put so much in this present world right. that we have forgotten that there's an eternal yes, world. Sir. <laughs> and the Bible tries to encourage us to understand that this is why we're saved. That's right. We believe that after this, there's a greater. Amen. You know, but how do you <laughs> fall apart when they achieve that purpose of being saved and then they go and depart to go and receive the inheritance, mm. the blessing, the miracles mm -hmm. of life, to be in the presence of an almighty God. Hallelujah. And, and then be able to lift their Thank hands you, eternally Jesus. because they've made it. Their name now written in the land book of life. <laughs> so there is a need to understand that yeah. death has a purpose. Yes. Come on. I, Amen. I, 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 I got, <laughs> got caught up here for a second. But, no, but, but it's, I, it's amazing that, you know, there's many. I'm talking about many now. Yeah, many yeah. Christians who are devastated. Now, yeah. I've had two sons to die. Mm. And, and, and and the first one, it was it caught me off guard. I, right. I was unprepared. Mm. But once God really started showing me revelation through his death, mm -hmm. amen, which I, I told I, I, I tell everybody, I, I laugh, I said, when I get to heaven, I'm going to get him because he, he done <laughs> skipped all the sorrows, the setbacks, having to take care of family, right. had to feed folks, right. had to take abuse. Come on, I'm going to have to right. get him. And, you know, so so we see here that you can rejoice because, you know, we're going to meet him again. Yeah. And okay. that's what Paul said. Paul, who wrote to the saints at Philippi, mm -hmm. he said, I'm between two. Mm -hmm. He said, whether to be with the Lord, that would be far better. He didn't say it would be worse. He said to be with God would be far better. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, I shall abide in the flesh because it's more needful. So him being here in the earth was more needful for the saints. Right. But he knew to die would be far better. Right now, I think about that all the time. When I'm at home, sometimes my wife, I start thinking, wait a minute, for me to die right now would be better. I don't want you to go anywhere. No, I don't want. <laughs> but it would be better for me because I'll be with the Lord. But, right. to, but to be here right now is more needful because the Bible says in Psalms 115 and verse 16, the heavens, even the heavens are the Lord's, but he's given the earth to the children of men. So here on the earth, we're called to do an assignment. We're called to do work and we're going to continue that work. But the Paul also told us that we are not, we should not sorrow mm -hmm. like I them that have no, no hope. hope. And that's what we, we got hope that and after we and die. One of, the, one of the most powerful things that, 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 that always comes to me is it's not how fast you start off. Mm. Because there's a book you wrote. Yeah, called Long Distance Runner. That's the 12th book that we wrote. And it's 
the subtitle is Running to Receive the Prize. And in this book, we talk about running with right connections, running with responsibility. We talk about running with fresh oil. We talk about all these things that we need in order to go the distance. Many people start out. They start out good. They start out like they're going to stand with ministry. They start out like they're going to go all the way Woo! with the kingdom of God stuff. But yet they don't. And we want to be a long distance runner. This is not a sprint. This is a marathon. And uh, it's very important that when you run a marathon that you pace yourself carefully because you're not running a sprint. If you take off in a marathon like you run a sprint, you're going to give out a gas. You're not going to make it to the end. And that's how a lot of people do. They take off. You say, oh, my God, they're on fire. They're on fire. Next thing you know, where's brother so-and-so? Where's sister so-and-so? You know, they didn't prepare their hearts and minds to finish the race and run the distance. So in this book, we talk about many different keys to, to go the distance with God and what it takes to do be a long distance runner. Paul said, we they do it for a corruptible crown, but we should do it for an incorruptible crown. And, and, you know, now that you're talking about how the runner, you know, when I think about that runner and how you mentioned that it's going to be a long distance run. Mm -hmm. but one thing you notice about the fact that these 25 mile runners mm -hmm. notice that they have people lined up along the way. Mm hmm. You know, as they're running, they need water. <laughs> yeah. Hey man, they need towels. They they need refreshment and encouragement. And as they're running down, they see people that they know. All of these are inspirations to keep them running. Amen. And that's where I say fellowship is yes, so very, very important. Yes, yes. Hey Amen. When you can run and then you see the works of your labor, because you had to get in shape to get to the point where you could run. Yes, Come yes, on, yes. And, and even as you were saying, I think about how, you know, Many people thought that this pandemic was going to just be a little brief thing. And we've been in this thing over a year. And then it's amazing how people used to always laugh and be criticizing the nation of Israel because they were brought out of Egypt. But yet they were going around like in circle for many, many years. They go, oh, man, I don't know how in the world them people can complain. I don't know how in the world them people can murmur. And yet we only been in this pandemic for about a year and people complain. I'm tired. I'm tired of this. I'll be glad when it's over. Complaining. We're doing the same thing they done. Amen. But we got to go the distance. Understand that they get the promise. People inherit the promises through faith and patience. Patience is steadfast endurance. I will not be beaten by what is facing me. I will outlast it. I will still be standing when it's over because I made up my mind no matter how long it takes, all the days of my appointed time will I wait until my change come. That's the attitude you got to have. When you make up your mind like that, Satan will lose against you every time because you're saying, I don't care how long it takes what God promised me I'm going to have. Mm. What God said would be mine. Mm. I'm going to see it happen. And we're reaching. Yes, sir. You know, not, not, yeah. not as if we're beating in the wind. Yes, sir. We know that there's a prize. That's right. That's what keeps us on task. That's what we talk about when we talk about faithfulness. Mm. We're talking about giving. We're talking about those things that are uh, aligned Hallelujah. with success. Yes. You know, because what yes. shall the profit of man to gain the world? Mm. Amen. There's methods to gaining <laughs> stuff down here. But there's an ultimate ta, 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 Come on, somebody. Yes, sir. There's an ultimate reef that we're reaching for. Yes, sir. It's called the crown of glory. Yes, God, sir. Come on, somebody. That's right. And Paul yes. said God promised that not yes. only to me, but all those who, who love, love his, his appearance. Come Hallelujah. On, <laughs> glory right. to God. And the last book, <laughs> the 13th book that we wrote is entitled, Let the Prophet Speak, mm -hmm. Show Us Our Way. And uh, it's a dynamic book. That covers many, many things, and uh, it just really, really is a book that will cause you to value, amen, the prophetic ministry, call you to value, amen, God being a God that wants you to know that he wants you to see that he has some things prepared for you that I have not seen and ears not heard, neither enter into the heart of man those things which God hath prepared for them that love him. And then we talk in this book about uh, the prophet Balaam. Mm -hmm. uh, prophet Balaam was being challenged by Balak, who was the king of the Moabites, and he was being challenged to go down there and curse mm. God's people. And this prophet, it was amazing to me as I, you know, you study the word and you see things in it that you don't know. 
Balaam name means in the Hebrew, not of the people. Mm. So we should be prophets who are not doing what we're doing for money, not doing what we're doing for fame, not doing what we're doing for the people. We have to say some things oftentimes that people don't like. Oh, God. And so there's a section here about prophet, real prophets say things that people don't like. Balaam, was his name means not of the people. But in the New Testament, mm -hmm. the same word, Balaam, mm -hmm. means perhaps. Can you imagine a man name meaning in the Hebrew, not of the people. In the New Testament, he's called perhaps. Because why? Balaam went off. Balaam gave in to what the king of the Moabites wanted him to do. He tried to go down there. God told him, look, when these men come, do not go with them unless I tell you. And the Bible said he didn't wait for the men to ask him to go. He gets up and goes and the dumb ass saves his life on one occasion because God allowed a donkey to talk. God allowed a donkey to save him because he wanted to keep going forward. But the donkey saw the angel drawn, I mean, with his sword drawn, ready to cut Balaam's head off and kill him. And, of course, we know that Balaam tried to pull the donkey aside and make him go straight. And he said, he said, even if I had a sword, if I had a sword, I would stab you, I would kill you. And then suddenly the donkey begins to talk <laughs> and say, haven't I been good to you and all this? That's why you can't call people dumb. Amen. Because <laughs> God will speak through people that you don't think is on your level. Amen. And give you revelation that, hey, God's talking to you. Yeah. You Amen. Know? And you think about this this prophet. He 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 ends up losing his life. Mm. He ends up being killed. Mm. Amen. Because he gives in to the tried to give in to the request. He teaches. He knew he could not curse God's people because when God's people are blessed, nobody can curse God's people. But he showed God's people how to curse themselves. He showed the rather the uh, king of Moab, Moab how to get God's people to curse themselves by giving in to offering up stuff to idols and committing fornication. And it caused them to lose out with God. And so in this book, Let the Prophet Speak, Show Us Our Way, it's a, it's a good book to bring value and to bring back. Uh, really some great, great truths about the prophetic. The prophetic is so important in the hour and the time in which we live. And Satan would love for us to throw away the baby with the bathwater, to say, I don't believe in prophecy no more. But we don't, we need it. We need it like we never have before. And understand one thing, and that's what God kept trying to tell Balaam. And Balaam started off trying to tell Balak. And he should have kept telling him. He said, I cannot go beyond the word of the Lord, nor can I speak less than the word of the Lord. We have to understand that real prophets, I talk about, they can only speak what God reveals. God's if That's God right. doesn't reveal anything and say anything to him, they can't say anything. There have been times when I've been in your service, man of God, and you are a man of God, and, and he really speaks forth prophetic words, many of the things that he's spoken Concerning my life have come to pass and what we and other men of God, prophets of God have spoken many things in my life that I see. God told me years ago that I write books, be on television, all this stuff that I'm doing now through the prophetic word. But one of the things I've been in your service many times and and, you know, sometimes, you know, you want may want somebody to prophesy to you and give you a prophetic word of confirmation. Mm -hmm. And. uh Many times we, I, I played with you after service because I know when that head go to shake and some, some problem for me. And I said, what the Lord saying? He said, no, the Lord ain't saying nothing. I said, okay, fine. No, it's what we, we, we all know is we can't make up stuff on God. That's right. And whatever God says is got to be validated by the written word. God can never and will never speak outside of his written word. That's right. And you and I have to know that the Bible says men as are led by the spirit, Romans 8, 14, they are the sons of God. So we understand, I talk about in this book, irreplaceable Holy Spirit. There's no prophet, apostle, evangelist, pastor, and teacher that can ever take the place of the Holy Spirit in your life and mine. And so all of this is in this book. But we need the prophetic and we thank God for prophets today that are real honorable men. Yes, sir. Honorable men. Well, we pray that God has spoken to many of you all. 
a great author, great preacher, amen, a great man of God, amen. I, we salute you, we celebrate you, and even now we're asking you all to just contact uh, Newness of Life or either contact God of Deliverance and these books that he has shared out of his heart is available if you would only contact, amen. Uh, what's your telephone number that they can call to okay. be able to order these books? Yes, uh, thank you again, Apostle. We appreciate this wonderful a night that we've had sharing the word of God. Uh, the number is 252-641-0098. And uh, if you don't get anybody, you can continually leave your message on the answering service and let us know which one of these 13 books that you would like to have. Again, how to overpower discouragement, seeking God makes you prosper, sheep taming wolves, don't lose yours, trying to save theirs, the blessings of rejection, keys to enjoying the journey, amen, uh, spiritual upgrade, riding the back of a sore, uh, miracles, as well as death, a need to understand, and long distance runner, and let the prophet speak, show us our way. Any of these 13 books can be yours by calling us at 252-641-0098. That number again is 252-641-0098. Amen. Amen. Well, just before we close, I just wanted to say amen. On tomorrow, we usually don't have a broadcast on Thursday. But this Thursday, we are reaching out to our young people. We put a program together that I truly believe is going to be a blessing to so many. So if you that are tuned in tonight, please make it a, a, a mental note hmm. to tune into God of Deliverance Ministries, Apostle Kenneth Anderson on Facebook. Amen. Because we're going to have a session talking about insecurities, how our young people are facing so many obstacles. And I have a young lady who's going to share her heart, amen, as well. And we're going to walk right through that session, amen. Young folk, old folk, in-between folk, all of you are invited because we truly believe that God wants to help our young people. We have not a clue, especially if you're mm -hmm. up in the 50s and different things of this mm -hmm. nature. The things that young yeah. people are facing today, Strike. we don't even have a clue, mm. amen? And so therefore, amen, God has put it in my heart to start having a program, and the name of the program in totality is No Shame in Our Game. Mm. So <laughs> as we get ready to close, I'm going to ask Bishop to go ahead and lead us in prayer one more time, and I pray that tonight it has been an awesome night. Man of God, thank you so much. Man, appreciate you. Are, you. You, you are important to me. And that's why whenever you write books, amen, amen. we're going to do this all the time. Amen. Just give appreciate you a chance, you. Let you see that, hey, I want to push you to that next level amen. as I know that you want to do the same for me. Amen. We love you. And again, uh, I want to encourage you that I watch. I noticed the apostle kept talking about accountability. I want you to understand that the Bible says, obey them that have rule over you. For they watch for your soul as they that must give an account. And he said, and when you don't do it, it's not profitable for you. But you should do it so that when they're doing it, they can do it with joy. So I encourage all of you, God of Deliverance family, continue to obey the man of God so that he can continue to finish his course with joy. Newness of Life Christian Center, thank you for giving Pastor Reese and I an opportunity to serve you and letting your Love and obedience come forth so that we can continue to do this with joy. I believe that it's sad. It's a sad commentary when people hate being pastors, wish they had never done it. I don't think that's the way that God wants it to be. I think God wants us to finish our course with joy and be glad that he called us and chose us for the assignment. And that's the way I want to finish. And I thank God again for Apostle Kenneth Anderson and your lovely wife, Janet. Hey, Janice. We love it. That's my <laughs> crab buddy. Amen. Look forward to getting together. Amen. After this pandemic. Amen. That we can go get some good crab legs. Amen. Because uh, Pastor Janice and I, we love crab legs. And Pastor Anderson and my wife, they, they ain't into that. They into technology. But we thank God. <laughs> Amen. For that great woman of God. And we both love crab legs. So we look forward to that, but we thank God for you. Let's have a word of prayer and close out. Father, thank you tonight that something was said that will help lift somebody's spirit. 
that something was spoken that would bring somebody to a place of turnaround, that someone would examine themselves and cry out from their heart, what must I do to be saved? And those who are saved will cry out like never before that they are grateful that you brought them into the kingdom for such a time as this. We thank you tonight that your anointing has destroyed yokes and all glory go to you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah.